<clears throat> definitely brings up an interesting talk. Like, you got to feel at some point. Dawkins, Dawkins and, and Teller is sitting there going. They're looking over their shoulder. Where are all these guys coming from? I know. <laughs> Did we really do that bad, guys? And, you know what? And maybe these signings are to help Teller and Dawkins develop, right? As because guards? We, Got him again! Oh, that's, oh, that felt so good. <laughs> oh, that felt so good. <laughs> Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. But, do you really think they're going to use a draft pick on a... Offensive linemen now? They've signed six of them. Yeah, but they're all disposable contracts. They are. They are. They're one and they're two all, year deals. They're all disposable. Yeah. I'm going to take it on the chin if you. I understand. They're, they're one and two year prove it deals, which means you're going to get the best performances that those guys have. And what it also does is it sets the stage of does this system work? Mm -hmm. Does this process of acquiring talent work? Mm -hmm. Hey, we've signed six offensive linemen. Morse, we'll take him out of the out of the mix, right? Right. Because he's he was signed to start there for right. four years. So you got five offensive linemen that are technically on prove it deals. Mm -hmm. All right. What if only two of those guys pan out? Does that mean the system failed? Right. I'm just wondering what percentage are they assigning to the process or the statistical analysis? Going back to Moneyball. Right. That works. Right. What works? But they. It's not like Moneyball doesn't spend money. Moneyball spends money. They just invest into big pieces and then the rest of the roster is you know all fit within whatever scheme they determine hmm. so it was a great comment to bring up because yeah, yeah it's not like moneyball spends an even amount of money it's not communism where they spend <laughs> an equal amount of money well and again they're in a situation now where they don't have to reach for any position they could just go get whatever they want because the yeah. contracts that they brought in are all disposed we can get rid of them which means, now, does this go to the back to the conspiracy theory I'm always talking about? You signed five disposable contracts. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you're trying to give teams the illusion that you're going to go defensive? Right, exactly. I so think you it can just trade it back. I don't even know if it's about building an illusion, Mario, as it is just building a football team that can start right now. Because, yeah. it, I mean, you look at the offensive guys. line, and you want to help Josh Allen with protection, you go in and bring in guys who don't need to learn how to protect in the NFL. Great point. So, the thing that I love about it is that people were talking about the offensive line last year. Mm -hmm. Allen was still able to be somewhat productive using his legs, getting away, doing this and that and the other thing. I think what, pe what people are getting excited about now is the fact that they've recognized what the problem was mm -hmm. and they're trying to rectify it. Yep. Did they get big name guys? Did they go get Trent Brown, Roger Saffel? No. What they did was for less money than those guys were signed for. One of those guys. Yep. They got they were able to fill a whole line. Yep. And depth. Mm -hmm. Why would why would that be hateful at all? When you see so many teams invest all this money in a free agent and then they don't pan out. Yeah, that's that's all your eggs in one basket. The Bills which... have three centers on the roster right now. You don't think they're protected against Mitch Morris? They are. <laughs> yeah. They're perfectly protected against well, Mitch Morris I mean, this could being, just be, being a mistake. We're probably just waiting. It's the waiting game now. Because remember when they signed Gore? And we're like, well, Ivory's got to be gone soon, right? Yep. And it took a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Bo died just maybe. Yep. Or unless they try to see if Spencer Long doesn't work out. Well, I think they're looking to see if Spencer Long can compete at guard. Which I feel he can. Yeah, I agree with that. So you got Gar, you got, you got, I mean, you got Long, Feliciano. Yeah, but you look at the line that they're building, man. Pass protection, pass protection, pass protection, pass protection. That's well, they said all they he care wanted, about. They said he wanted to run more spread concepts. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe that's maybe that's a snare. Maybe that's why a running back isn't a high priority in this offense. Mm -hmm. We're gonna throw thirty-five times a game. Maybe run twenty-five. And the Bills will sign Quentin Span to play guard again. Probably a guy that they looked at and said, does he make our team better than what we have? Yes. He's looking for a one-year deal. Let's go. Let's go. Grades out great in pass protection. You know, it's just they're building such a pass protection happy line that it really makes you wonder, are they truly okay with going with Gore and McCoy as they're starting two running backs if they're building a line that's primarily been, you know, 
primarily excelled at pass protection. Because you could. You could survive the season with them because of that. Mm -hmm. Because you have such a pass protection. Right. We're not um, going to be running the ball 30 times a game, 35 times a game mm -hmm. with the running backs. You're, you're going to have some designed runs for, you know, you're going you're gonna to get your wide receivers involved behind the line of scrimmage because they did last year, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get them a couple runs. You're going to get Allen a couple designed RPOs because you know they're going to be there. They're going to be in the system. It's just yep. a matter of time. Yep. Um, and then you look at how many other plays you're willing to donate to the run. There's probably only another 20 carries there. Maybe. Yeah. And you have three other running backs. Oh, guys, newsflash. Here we go. So, if you guys are new to the show, then you will not know of Mario's absolute adoration for Anthony Munoz. Loves him. Best left tackle in football. <laughs> the Anthony Munoz treatment. Yes, Anthony Munoz. The greatest left tackle of all time. Who played all but one year at left tackle for a left-handed quarterback. I'm sick of you, Munoz! According to your brother, he's the best left tackle in football. If you go back to a Bluetooth breakdown, uh, former D1 coach Mike Granada told me that if you play left tackle, you play right tackle. It's These guys are all athletes. doesn't matter. So the Anthony Munoz argument carries no water that he was the best left tackle for a left-handed quarterback in NFL history. That's his best right tackle is what you keep saying. That doesn't, that doesn't hold any water anymore. Probably shot that one down. Thanks, Mike. He did. Shot it down. This is going to be a long walk home for me. We are pretty far. <laughs> we are quite a ways away.